72. And when you find it, stand for the reading of the word. And I promise I won't be before you long. I understand the length of your attention span. Oh, <laughs> and I'll see to it that I get you out. Oh, no. Amen. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. The law of my mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. Mm. You may be seated. Many of you who are new to Christendom come up on a different type of gospel. Come up on this gospel that you name it and you claim it. You come up on this gospel, if you give God some money, everything is going to be all right. <laughs> you come up on this gospel that you have protection. That nothing can happen to you because you are a child of the Most High God. I remember, I remember you that. come up on the gospel that all you have to do is sow a seed, and in two minutes you shall reap if you thank God. Two minutes. I hate to tell you this, uh -oh, don't do it, but those are lives from the pits of hell. Oh my goodness! And the Bible never promised us anything like that. Amen. When afflictions and trouble come, I want you to pay attention to what God is trying to teach you. Right. Mm. In the movie The Color Purple, one of my favorites, yes, my, yes, 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 when yes. she starts singing, maybe God's trying to tell you something. And sometimes God would prefer to let the goodness of God lead you to repentance, but usually... We don't use that goodness and turn ourselves around. Oh. Amen. Usually God gets his greatest success out of our life in affliction or trouble. Mm -hmm. It's in affliction that we can truly learn what God might say. It said, I that I might learn your statutes, that I might learn God's ways, that I might figure out what God is trying to tell me. Because on your sunshine today, you're not studying. Amen. Say amen. Amen. You see, when I went to prison, God got a little of my attention. A little. He inconvenienced me. Oh, no. When my son died, he got a little bit more of my attention. But God is not that type of God that needs a little of your attention. He needs your undivided okay. attention. Amen. So we kept on living. When my husband passed, that was probably the worst trial that I ever, if, if I had to put a grade to it, it would have been an F plus. I whined, I complained, I, com I accused God. But then this cancer diagnosis, I, I hear you, God. Mm. I know your ways. I know you're faithful. As the lost and dying world watch you. So often, our response to trials is to complain and to murmur. Why am I sick? Why am I broke? Why I can't never have nothing? Where's my man? Where's my wife? Why is my marriage being affected? Why is my finances under attack? Instead of hearing what God really wants to say in our affliction, we turn around and start to accuse God mm -hmm. instead of thanking him. It's a hin hin human tendency mm -hmm. to think that problems and trials and afflictions are always evil. But the psalmist says, it's good for me to be afflicted. That I might learn. Sometimes you just cannot learn without pain. You ever see a child? Stop little Johnny. Stop little Marquisha. No, 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 boogie boogie. But until you get them and put some thigh to them, right. they can't learn they can't to keep learn. their hands off your stuff. Well, as it is in the natural. So it is. In the spiritual. God does not, he's not the author of evil. 
And using evil does not compromise his goodness. Amen. All right. Amen. A lot of times we're looking at every move that our new president is making. But using evil doesn't compromise God's goodness. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. When Christians began to go astray or get stagnant, God uses affliction to get you where he needs you to go. He'll let the bottom fall out. Yes, yes on your job, everybody who used to like you hates you now. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Your friends, all of a sudden you just got a great turnover in those. <laughs> Amen. And so when you see that God is allowing a certain amount of calamity in your life, you'll come to understand that in affliction, God is still God, and he's still able to accomplish his purposes and plans for your life. Amen. He just needs to get your attention. Life is a series of problem-solving opportunities. And afflictions that you face will either develop you or they're going to defeat you. And it's your choice of how you choose to handle and respond to affliction. But unfortunately, most people fail to see how God is using affliction. You have people who, 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 try, who are stuck in relationships that God is trying to move them out of. Mm -hmm. Amen. Not always marital relationships, mm -hmm. but just friendships. Sometimes, you know, we've been friends for 25 years. Is anybody growing? Is anybody learning? Amen. How you friends with somebody 20 years who ain't saved? Mm. Amen. Ain't nothing you did rubbed off? Mm. Mm -mm. It just makes you think. Well. Amen. Amen. So when we react foolishly to problems that God sent, that he sends, God will turn that problem up a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. It was a little problem. If you'd have learned from it, that problem would have been you'd be testifying. Right? Uh -oh, uh -oh. But since you can't learn, All right. All right. then God turns it up <laughs> so that you're able to see hands is great and mighty even in the midst of calamity. So I want to give you this morning because I understand the attention span. We have already every praise. You done dance and sang. Now it's time to hear the word so that you can go on in your life and run this race with patience, endurance. Amen? Amen. 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 So God wants to use the problems in your life. Everybody in here who's got a problem right now, you got to tell me what it is. Raise your hand. A problem. Any type. For those who are problem free, praise God. I don't know what it is. If you're problem free, are you breathing? Amen? Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. Problems are part of this life. Right. They're guaranteed. The Bible says, in this world ye shall have tribulations. tribulations. Amen. Amen. Right. And if you don't have any problem, I ain't got no problem. You're a liar. Yeah. Ah, that's, that's a big problem. problem. Right. That's, that's you got problem. a lying problem. <laughs> 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 because everybody has some type of problem. You might weigh too much. You might not weigh enough. Oh. You have a problem. Right. You have a lion's problem. You can't tell the truth to save your life. You right. have a spending problem. Everybody has a problem. If you acknowledge this problem, mm. then God can be God because he's trying to use that affliction to bring you to maturity. Amen? Amen. 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 So I want to give you six ways that God used the problems in our life. Mm. First way he uses it is he gets our attention and let us know that the problem is not about you. Amen. The problem is about him and what he wants to accomplish in your life. When God sends us an affliction, it's to get our attention to the fact that God controls our life. When I got a cancer diagnosis, I was, I was on the third. When I laying on my couch watching TV, and everybody knows me, know I don't relax. But I was laying on my couch, when my phone rang, I knew it was a breast cancer center. I knew what they were going to say. I had no symptoms. I had nothing that I could feel. But I was ready for this problem. I had spent five years grieving, crying, and making Facebook posts for y'all to like, going ham and nothing up. I had been five years on that job. <laughs> now, here comes another problem. 
because life is a series of mountain highs and valley lows. Now, you got to know which mountain, are you at the top of the mountain uh -huh. or are you at the bottom of the mountain? I can't stand Christians who think they're not supposed to go through nothing. Right, right. And leaders who go through something, hiding. You ain't going to have to guess what I die from. Uh -oh. huh? You're not going to guess that. Up to the last moment I can type some, you gonna know she out of here. <laughs> but you gonna also know the accent from this box. Yes, amen. Yes. Yes. I'm gonna be yes. I'm gonna finish my course and I'm yes. gonna finish well. Yes. Amen. amen. So it's not about you. Afflictions have a way of bringing yes. life to a screeching halt and leading us to see that we are finite and he's infinite. He can do what he want to do. Amen. He's sovereign. And whatever he do, he ain't wrong. Amen. He's not creature obligated. He owes us nothing, not even an apology or an explanation. Amen. And so when you understand who you're dealing with, you'll understand it's about him because in the scheme of things, I'm one dot in eternity. Amen. That's why I bow to him. This is why you lift your hands, not when you feel like it. You lift your hands because you should. Amen. Amen. When you understand the magnitude of the God that you're dealing with. Amen. When you understand that he knows your thoughts from afar off. He knows your down sitting. He knows your uprising. He knows everything that has happened to you. He knows the date of your birth and the date that you will enter into death. Yes. It's already pre-planned. Pre Amen. Mm. You can make it quicker if you want to. Say amen. amen. So it's not about you. He wants, the psalmist is saying, it's good that you have been afflicted because you can learn now. Mm. Similarly, afflictions ought to drive us back to God's word. I instantly on a cancer diagnosis, I guess this is God what you're saying. Now, you know, you know what I'm doing, don't you? Mm -hmm. I'm exercising four or five days a week with a young psychotic. I'm <laughs> running around with little young kids, 20, 30 years old. They thinking I'm hoping what they do. I know, you know I'm eating right, eating carrots and lettuce. You know I'm going to bed and taking a nap. Lord, I even went to be a health coach. You know what I'm doing. I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't sleep around. Why I got this? Mm. Now, Lord, if you want to afflict somebody, I got a list of people you can get with. <laughs> they eat that, that, cornbread, doing whatever they want to do, but I'm here. Why, why me, Lord? Why me? Well, I didn't have to go through all that. Because I understood at this point on my journey that afflictions were so that I could know him. Even though I'm not doing all of the, 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 the A-list sins, mm -hmm. sleeping around, all that, you know, that, that's, you know, those are little devils. Yeah. Oh, A-list sins. Those are A-list sins. Oh, okay. I realized that there were other things in my life that God wanted my attention for. Amen. Right? Amen. I want you to learn how with all your education and say no. Mm -hmm. mm. I want you to sleep eight hours because you're fearfully and wonderfully and made. Be made. I want you to stop taking on the stresses of other people. Amen. Yes. 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 Amen. I want you to stop being a demigod. You no. can't solve everybody's problem. Amen. Uh, amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Say amen. 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 So the first thing he wants us to know is not about us. It's about him. Mm -hmm. Second thing I want you to know that God uses our afflictions and our problems to direct us. Sometimes God must light a fire under you to get you moving in the right direction. Amen. Say amen. 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 Problems often motivate us to do the right thing. Uh -huh. If the problem is used correctly, it will direct you in the right direction. Sometimes it takes a painful situation for us to change our ways. Turn to Psalms. I mean, Proverbs 20 and 30. The blueness of a wound cleanseth away evil, so do stripes the inward parts. 
of the belly. Mm. Amen. And so sometimes God uses our problems to direct us. Sometimes you're on the wrong path, baby. You need to get from over here. You need to stop hanging out with someone. So you need, you know, sometimes it'll keep you out of a bad relationship. Some people should have never married. Mm. Well. Mm. God did everything he could to direct you. You was fighting his will. Say amen. 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 Yeah. The third thing that God does, he uses problems to inspect you. Mm. To check yourself. Say amen. amen. We're like tea bags. And you never know what's in us until hot water hit it. Oh. Woo. Woo. Right now. You think you got it going on to hot water. Something sets it off. So you, you know, a lot of people, I, I don't curse no more until you get in the wrong situation. <laughs> wrong situation, all of a sudden you say a curse words you ain't said in 20 years. <laughs> Trials come to inspect you. Check you out. See what you're working with. Yeah, I love the Lord. I'm a giver until the light be a bit. Amen? Amen. And so, when, you, when it comes to inspect you, we have many kinds of troubles, and you don't know the joy of these troubles until your faith and your patience have been tested. Mm -hmm. It's easy to say what you won't do when you ain't been put in that situation. Some people say, I don't fornicate. You ain't dated in 20 years. <laughs> sure you're fornication free. <laughs> Amen? Amen. But it ain't till you dating a fine somebody well, that you got to pray your way through. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. See, I know what he bought me from. That's why I ain't got the food. <laughs> Amen. I'm good. Over here. Amen. You've not been tested mm. to be faithful. Until somebody bring you a bone. Uh oh. Some gossip. It's easy to say what you won't do. But allow the hot water to hit you. Amen. And you will need to inspect you. I didn't even know they were still in me. I, 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 I didn't know. I, I realized that I have a problem with foreign speaking people. I'm sorry. I've not been delivered. I'm saying, <laughs> sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Until I have to call somebody who don't speak English. Uh -oh. uh, I start off and I say I'm delivered. Hello? This is the only <laughs> Instantly start to feel some type of way. By the end of the conversation, I'm in disrespectful mode. <laughs> Say, love Jesus. But I'm being disrespectful. Then I start to go over there and hey, where's your supervisor? <laughs> Do they speak English? <laughs> then I, I, my prejudices start to come out. Uh oh. All right, watch yourself. Watch yourself. All right. Because hot water just hit me. Yeah. 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 And it's letting me know you ain't got rid of that yet, dog. No, you didn't know you did. You don't know what's in you uh -huh. until some hot water hits you. You still got a nasty attitude. Amen. All you got to do is have a climate right for it. Amen. You still sleeping around. All you got to do is get a boat. Mm -hmm. Say amen. amen. You still robbing God. All you need is a bill. Mm -hmm. Afflictions will inspect you. Mm -hmm. Say amen. Turn to James 1, 2 and 3. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. The trying of your faith, count it all joy when God sends you a problem. Amen. Because you don't know what the problem is sent to accomplish in you. Amen? Amen. 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 I, I talked to someone yesterday who said they had a problem that their own sister tried them up. And I'm just listening by the spirit. Uh -huh. yeah, she been trying to get my baby to go to church with her. Uh -oh. So I, I start asking the probative questions. You know, because I didn't want to think your sister just came at you like that. Right, it. right, right. It's your right. blood. Watch out. So I asked her. I, I just do my exercise. Mm -hmm. And I asked her. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you know, I tried to figure, you know, do your sister go to church? Uh-oh. Yeah, she ain't been going but a couple of weeks. She just got 
You know, all of a sudden she's so spiritual. That's what I'm saying. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Do you go? Yeah. I'm talking about intelligent. Yeah. Good credit score, because y'all know I can smell this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Faithful husband. Mm-hmm. Disciplined, smart David. You know, a lot of times you can have it so going on that you don't need God. All right, all right. All right. No, no, she understood how, but them boys, <laughs> they put their finger right on the fire. I said, why are you burning my trees? I'm teaching them stuff. I didn't think that was the proper method until later. Uh-huh, uh-huh. What if a child didn't understand right. that fire was hot? Amen. You ever seen kids that run in the kitchen right to the yeah. stove? Yeah. They ain't been taught nothing. Right, uh-huh. right. They don't understand the danger of heat. And so if you get burned on that stove one good time, they ain't coming that's back in there all, all unless need. they're retarded. Yeah, that's all you need. <laughs> one good time. One. Amen. That's all you and need. then you're dealing with something else. Uh, right, right. Understood. Amen. As you are retarded in the natural, there's some spiritual, spiritual. retardation. Oh, You get out of one bad relationship and you find one. They don't like the one you didn't get out of. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Amen. Oh, Jesus. I just have a sympathy issue with women who are beat by 40 men. Man, what do you pick four men who beat you? Amen. Amen. In your lifetime, there's some retardation here. When I rob God and I keep getting the same effect, there's some retardation right. in my journey with him. Amen. So he'll turn the heat up. Because God efficaciously can save you. All right. He knows the climate to set you in. He knows how much pressure to yes, apply to your life. He yes. knows what it's going to take to make you lift your hand and yes. come out and say, Lord, yes. please help me. Yes. Amen. He knows the way that I take it, man. Amen. 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 Turn to Psalm 119 and 72. Mm. 71 and 72. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. Mm. The law of my mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. Sometimes we only learn the value of something by losing it. When you lose your health, all of a sudden just health comes to read everything. Your relationship. You only learn the value of it when you lose it. Yeah, yeah. Your money. You only learn the value of your money when you don't have it. And you've seen people who, when they get $50, they eat out all day. And then when they get down to five, they start thinking, I'm going to give this to the Lord. Well, you give it to the <laughs> You didn't yeah. give it nothing now. Yes. Some things we only learn the value of when we lose it. Mm-hmm. When you lose your house, you'll learn how to get one that you can pay for. Amen. 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 By losing it, it's the best thing. Because what pain teaches you 
Nothing else can. Amen. Amen. In affliction, I learn your ways. The fifth thing God uses our problems and afflictions for is to protect you. Turn to Genesis 50 and 20. But as for you, ye thought evil against me. But God meant it unto good to bring to pass that as it is as it is this day to save much people alive. A problem could be a blessing, a affliction can be a blessing in disguise. Mm -hmm. That relationship he didn't let you get in. And you live long enough to find out he was a drug addict and an abuser. Mm -hmm. See, I'm not cut out for that. Yeah. God protected me from a life sentence without parole. Amen. 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 I'm not cut out for that. Huh. Right. For the jobs that a lot of times you go and you apply for a job and God don't allow you to get the job and you screaming and hollering in God's face and then you find out that it was nothing but corruption and mess and drama on that job. You need to thank him when he says yes. no. Yes. The car he didn't allow you to buy. Yes. He knew you couldn't pay. He knew you were going to be laid off two years into that car. No, he did not allow it. God blocked it. He did not let it be so. Amen. What the devil intends for evil. God can use it for his glory. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Some of y'all should be praising God for the man you didn't get, the woman you didn't get, the children you didn't get. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Your DNA plus this man's DNA uh -oh. equal a lunatic. <laughs> I couldn't do 
I couldn't do anything, but I thought I was doing all right. Till I saw all other people doing it with ease. And I'm struggling, my heart beating real fast. Well, that's not when you quit. When it becomes difficult, that's when you keep on and persevere because it's building your core. The core of who you are is, can only be built through trials and difficulties, Amen. through uh, 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 affliction and problems. A sunshiny day is not going to develop you. And so when, when I'm exercising and I don't want to, and, I, and, and my body is tired, that's not when I quit and don't come back for three weeks. That's when I keep going because I'm building something. All of a sudden, what is wor worthless starts to be built up to become better. Mm -hmm. That turns to muscle. Mm -hmm. yes. And muscle in the spirit is what God is trying to build. Mm -hmm. God uses our problems to protect us and to perfect us. And God wants your character. Because it's only two things that you're going to take with you. You're going to take your spirit and your character before a holy God. You're going to stand before him and you're going to give an account for the deeds that you have done in your flesh. He don't want to hear. It's not going to be a long drawn out conversation, y'all. No. Especially people who are liars who, who, who pride themselves on a much word and their ability to talk their way out of sin. And when you stand before a holy God, and he knows everything about you, actual, factual, the coulda, wouldas, and the shouldas, all you're going to be able to hear. I don't know what type of parents you were, but I didn't let my children engage me. We're not going to keep talking about it. Right. Yes. I have the last word. Yes, yes. I say it's like this, it's going to be like this, and all you're going to need to hear is yes or no. All we're going to hear from God is well done. Right. Yes. Good and faithful servant. Forget the step. Uh -huh. from me, depart from me. You work of iniquity. I don't know you. Amen. And so God is not just interested in your money. He's interested in your character. And the word of God is supposed to meet you where you are, but bring you where you need to be. And how he's going to accomplish that. Is through the difficulties in your life. Everybody will serve a God who was a cake daddy. Everybody will serve a God who gives them what they want, when they want, how they want it. But who will serve a God who used the foolish things to confound the wise? Oh, how would he, would he use what evil to accomplish a good will? Mm -hmm. No, we don't understand it. Because his thoughts are above our thoughts. No, we don't understand it. Because his ways are above our ways. And so, it is a negative reality of life. I hate to tell y'all this, but problems are here to stay. Mm -hmm. Right. And the thing about it is, you don't get to order them. God does. He uses it the way that he will. Every person has had a problem in the past, and every person right now has a problem mm -hmm. in the present. There are only three people who don't have problems. Mm -hmm. See if you find yourself in uh -oh. the liar, uh. the insane, and the dead. Everybody else is subject. But I want you to remember this, that God is working in our lives, even when we don't understand it. He's working his will in our lives by whatever means necessary. Say amen. 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 It would be in your best interest to cooperate with than to fight. Your hands are too short to box with God. God. Amen. Somebody here this morning needs to cooperate with God. He's pulling on your heart. You're in the throes of affliction and problems. And for an unbeliever, it seems like God is being a child abuser. But for us who believe, we understand that good father tests and chasing his son. 
But with every head bowed, every person who sits under the word and learn you'll find that afflictions are what God orders to build your life they not only empower you they encourage you to trust in his word but every person under the sound of my voice is not saved just because you come to church that does not save you being saved requires you to confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You have to understand that you are a sinner first in need of a Savior. That none of this applies to you without making a decision that I want to walk with the Lord. If you want to walk with the Lord, he does not force you. He said, whosoever will, let him come. There's anybody here today who don't know the Lord in the free part of their sins, who today wants to say, Lord, I'm a sinner, and I'm helpless to save myself. If that's you, you can come to the front, and a minister will meet you, and pray with you, and get you ready to serve the Lord. Because prior to being saved, you're not, you're not fit for service. You see people in church, serving without salvation ain't nothing but a mess. You're not fit to serve. If that's you, you can come and someone will pray with you. Otherwise, you all are road red, right? You're road red. Secondly, you need a church home. Well, I promise you the best pastor I can be with to you, I'm going to keep it 100. I don't know no other way. If this is the house that God wants you to serve in, you can come to the front and we'll receive you as a member and get you ready for service. Everybody good? Come on and give God praise. 